empty every hat but their own. And uh, when the jailer comes back in, he says, I want at least one person to tell me the color of their hat. And if no one answers, you will all be killed. And if more than one answers, they better all be, or the people who answer had better be right. So, what is the probability the prisoners survive? They get to talk ahead of time on what their strategy is, but when they then go in the room, they can't see their own hat. All right, great. Let's forget that problem for a while. And let's look at a Hamming code with four information bits and three correction bits. So here they are. It's best done this way. I'm going to have x1, x2, x3, x4. And you notice I put a homework problem on to that effect. And these are going to be assigned at random. There are two to the fourth ways to do that. There are four bits of information. And then I'm going to add some check bits. And so here is x1, x2, x3 and x4. And then the check bits will be x5, x6, and x7. So these are like parity checks. And what are the parity checks? Well, whatever I put in these assignments are bits I want to choose x5 so the parity is even. So if I see two, if I see three ones, I make this a one. If I see one one, I make it a one. If I see, you get it. All right, so let's do it for this one. And let's put the bits in. 1, uh, what's this, x2 is uh, over here, 0, uh, x4 is a 1, and x3 is down here, that's a 1. Those are the information bits. Now the parity uh, checks, let's see, I met, better make this a 0. So this is even parity. I'll make this a zero. So this is even parity. And this was x7. And I'm going to make this a one. So these are even parity. x6 is a one. So that's it. Now the claim is that any single error here can be corrected. So in fact, if I receive, where do you want to make an error? Choose a number, one through seven, you, two, thank you. An error is going to be made here. So we have uh, one, 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 zero, one, zero. And that looks like this. Uh, we change this to a one, and then we keep these all the same. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, this is a zero, and this is a zero, okay? So I made one error. I don't know where. You know the 
the hard thing about uh, adding check bits is uh, you give nature more chances to give you an error because it can give you an error in your information bits or in the check bits. So now let's see if we can correct this. Uh, whoa, what's this? The X6 dot to 1. Aha. Uh -huh. This is correct. And if we change this to a 1, that makes this correct, but this stays incorrect. And similarly, if we make this a 1, this is correct, but this stays incorrect, so it must be in the intersection. And so we notice if we change this to a 0, that we get an allowed code word. How many code words are there? 2 to the 4th of them, 16. And with the parity checks, uh, we've uh, added this. By the way, this reminds me a little of a problem that has a tedious and long solution, and it's just, it just can't be cleaned up very well. And that's the question of whether you can make a reliable computer out of faulty components. Suppose the wires themselves between the basic uh, whatever you have, uh, computing modules, are uh, they make an error with a probability p. Okay? So you say, hmm, here's a little module that is wrong with probability p. So the way to make a reliable computer is to put three of these modules together and then take a majority vote. But now each of them can be wrong with probability P and the wires to the majority vote can be wrong and so on. So you, you work it out so you have a satisfactory description of the problem. But as you can see, just as you had here, when you add redundancy, you add chances for errors. So can you actually uh, build this computer? The more it checks itself, the bigger it is, and the more error prone the totality is. Anyway, uh, Peter Gatch, that's G-A-C-F, written a 30-page paper on that and so on. Apparently you can. This is a problem initially looked at by von, von Neumann. So it's a little like this problem. Okay, this is a single error correcting code. If you make any single error, you can correct it and uh, recover the information bits. Now, back to the dying prisoners. Each, if you just have to tell the color of your hat, you're going to be wrong half the time. But if we work, if we use this in a way that I'm not going to tell you, uh, you can work out a strategy, then people number themselves, and then when they see everyone's hat but their own, they change, they decide what their hat color is. Uh, and they decide whether to raise their hand or not. And you can get all the errors to pile up, and I think you're, uh, the people will survive with very high probability. 
very high probability. What is the probability they survive? Seven eighths, I think. Isn't that interesting? You can't see your own hat. If you guess your own hat, the people in the room die with probability a half. Uh, but you could work it out so that seven eighths of the time, uh, the response of the room will be such that they survive. So I leave that as a puzzle for you. Another question that came up um, between last lecture and this is why entropy, say, of a random variable x rather than its variance as a measure of its randomness? And uh, the simple answer is simply this. Entropy comes up as the answer to certain fundamental questions, like how many bits does it take to describe x? Variance doesn't. Furthermore, variance has to do with the values the random variable x takes on, in addition to the probability it takes on these values. Whereas entropy is only concerned with the probabilities and not the names of the outcomes. So I can talk about the entropy of a smell, for example, that takes on, say, six values of smell, bad, good, well, uh, you know, maybe I should have gone with colors, um, red, blue, green and so on. You can find the entropy of something like that. It's a measure of how far the distribution, the probability mass function is from the uniform. So that's why entropy somehow is more fundamental than these other notions. By the way, I don't want to run down variance it comes up magically in the central limit theorem. So if you have real valued random variables and you want to add a number of them together, then the shape of the resulting distribution for the sum is uh, this beautiful thing involving e, pi, and the variance and nothing else. Well, the mean, but I was assuming zero mean. Okay, great. So last time we looked at chain rules, for example, like this. H of x super n is summation of H of xi given x sub super i minus 1, i equals 1 to n. And uh, remember the subscript means uh, 1, the random variable superscript means the string x1 true. In this case, x sub uh, i minus 1. Let me say something more about chain before we get into what's going on here. I want a chain rule for mutual information, x1 through xn, y. I want this to be summation of i of xi and y given this, the past, i equals 1 to n. Okay? Remember, by the way, this is a semicolon, these are commas. All right. Remember, the mutual information is going to be the resolvability of, say, y as observed by x, or x 
as observed by Y.